So let's talk about section 9.4, rational and quadratic inequalities. So these two types are much different than the linear inequalities that you've solved in the past or than the absolute value inequalities that we were just doing. So linear inequalities are solved in much the same way as linear equations. So if you have x plus 3 is greater than 5, you subtract 3 from both sides, and you say, well, then x must be bigger than 2. And then the only thing you have to remember about is if I have negative x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 4, and I subtract 2 from both sides, and I have negative x is greater than or equal to 2, then if I multiply or divide by a negative number, it reverses the direction of the inequality. So that's if you're doing a linear inequality. As soon as you have a higher degree, like quadratic, so remember a quadratic function looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. If you recognize that quadratic in an inequality, then you have to use this method I'm going to show you. You cannot solve it any other way. So I want to give you a couple of examples of this first function can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where a is negative a half and b is 0 and c is 3. So this is quadratic. And then this second one isn't because I have a fraction in the exponent. So let's look first at some pictures to try and get a mental image of what it is that we're doing. So this graph is to be used to solve an inequality. And the solution has to include a graph or a number line of the solution set and interval notation. So let's look at part A first, where it says, where is this function, the y values of this function, smaller than 0? Well, remember that the x-axis is the dividing line between here are y values bigger than 0 and here are y values smaller than 0. So we want y values smaller than 0. So we're looking down here in the bottom part of the graph. And here is the part of the graph where the y values are negative. So that starts happening when y is negative 3, and it goes until y is 8. So my number line solution of this inequality is from negative 3 to 8, and all the x values in between that. So what you're representing here is the inequality with x in it that says for values of x between negative 3 and 8, the y values are negative. So then the interval notation would be negative 3, 8. So this is for part a. So then part b says, where are the y values positive or 0? So we're talking about these pieces of the graph. Well, that's happening when x values go from negative infinity to negative 3, and then at negative 3, we have the equals 0. And then again, from 8 to infinity, those are the values of x where the y values are positive or 0 on this graph. So interval notation, negative infinity to negative 3, union 8 to infinity. So remember this is saying I want x values that are less than or equal to negative 3 or greater than or equal to 8. So be clear on what the solution set looks like. The solution set is what x values cause this to happen. So let's solve a quadratic inequality algebraically. And we first write the inequality so that you have the quadratic expression on one side and 0 on the other side. So you're going to have x squared minus 5x minus 24 is less than 0. 
So we're going to try and find the real zeros or the x-intercepts, which is the same thing as factoring and figuring out when you get zero. So this needs to be minus 8. Does that look like it works? Yes. So now we want to know when does x minus 8 equal 0 and when does x plus 3 equal 0. These are called zeros of the polynomial. So we have x equals 8 and x equals negative 3. So that divides the number line into pieces. We put them in the right relationship to each other with the negative 3 to the left. So now I have the number line divided into three pieces. So now you need to pick a test point in each interval and decide whether the function is positive or negative in that interval. So I make a chart. You don't have to make a chart exactly like this, but you have to show me evidence of your process and it has to be clear and needs to be organized. So I do what interval am I looking at? First from negative infinity to negative 3, I go from left to right. Then I pick a test point, any point in that interval, and I find that people do really good mental math with zeros, fives, tens, ones, simple numbers. So I'm going to pick negative 10 as my test point, and I'm going to ask the question, does negative 10 squared minus 5 times negative 10 minus 24 come out to be less than 0 or not? So doing mental math, you get 100 plus 50, 150 minus 24, is definitely not less than zero, so this is false. So this says I do not want this piece of the number line. Then the next interval is from negative three to eight. If zero is in the interval, use zero. It's really easy to do the arithmetic, and you see, well, negative 24 is less than zero. So I definitely want the piece of the number line from negative three to eight, but then from eight to infinity, let me use 10 for my test point. And I want to know if this is true. So 100 minus 50, 50 minus 24, definitely not smaller than 0. So I don't want that piece of the number line either. So my solution set is from negative 3 to 8. Sorry, I should have parentheses because it's a strict inequality. And so I should also have parentheses on my number line graph. So that's a quadratic inequality. So now let's look at the rational inequalities. And it's similar. I'll let you try this one on your own. And pause and do it yourself. And then come back and, and I will work it out with you. So here is after you've paused, worked it out yourself. Let's look at this. So we factor the quadratic, and then we want to know where is x minus 5 equals 0, and where is x plus 2 equals 0, because these are those places on the graph where we are crossing the x-axis, so we're finding those points. So we have x equals 5 and negative 2. So I'm going to have a number line with negative 2 and 5. So my first interval will be from negative infinity to negative 2. And I can pick any point in there. So I'm going to pick negative 10. And I want to know if negative 10 squared minus 3 times negative 10 minus 10. Now I want to know if it's positive. So 130 minus 10, definitely positive. So I want this piece of the number line. Then from negative 2 to 5, I'm going to pick 0 because that's easy. And negative 10 is definitely not bigger than 0, so I don't want this piece in the middle. And then from 5 to infinity, I'm going to pick 10. And 10 squared minus 3 times 10 minus 10. 100 minus 30 minus 10, yes, definitely positive. So I want that piece of the number line. And then again, I have strict inequality, so I want curved parentheses. And my interval notation will be negative infinity to negative 2. 
union 5 to infinity. And now I have to pause because I can only make a 15 minute long video.